slide shows what it is. I was in Warsaw last month, uh, and Richard Nelson, well, I, I swapped emails with him even there, and Richard said, well, have you gone to any of the places where the founder of Polish notation was? Uh, and I said, well, no, I haven't, but I've got some connections with a man, so I can talk about Jan Łukasiewicz uh, and talk about RPM for a bit. Um, and I've sort of tied various things in. Anyway, this is one of the buildings of Warsaw University, where he taught, but originally Jan Łukasiewicz uh, began his career in Lwów, uh, which is now called Lviv by the Ukrainians, and it's in, in the Ukraine now, and it was in Lwów in Poland before the war, and before that it was uh, in Austrian-occupied Poland, it was called Lemberg, and uh, as you know, place names change in Eastern and Central Europe. People move there and back. Anyway, he, he worked in Lwów, uh, where my grandfather was also a professor. So my grandfather was a professor in the same place at the same time as Jan Łukasiewicz. So although I didn't get to know the man, I, I knew people who knew him. But later on he moved to Warsaw University. He was a, an unassuming kind of chap, a typical university prof. But at the same time he, he did a lot of work in all sorts of fields. He was a philosopher, he, he did mathematical logic, he was rector of Warsaw University for a while, and he was a, a minister for education in the Polish government between World War I and II. Um, during World War II, when the Nazis closed down all the Polish universities, he taught in the underground university. My father was in the underground at the time, so again, sort of a link, not a direct personal one. One of my uncles was a student of his at Warsaw University before World War II, um, and he really liked the man's lectures. He, he, he was not only a good logician, he was also a good teacher. After World War II, he, like many idealistic Poles, just didn't want to stay under the communists. It, it wasn't his thing. Um, he spent the rest of his life working at Dublin University in Ireland. A, a bit of a letdown from a university that, and being a government minister, but that's the way lots of people felt after World War II. Anyway, he developed Polish notation as a parenthesis-free notation in 1922. He went on to develop multi-valued logic Instead of Boolean logic, one zero one zero only, he, he proposed a, a, a zero one two sort of logic where you've got the maybe answer between yes and no. Um, this was the first time that multi-valued logic was used, and of course now it's a basis for quantum computing where you don't know whether you've got a zero or one or a mixture of states in it. So he, he was, besides the founder of RPN, he in electronics they have tri-state. Yeah. Yes, you do now. So his work was in many fields. He, he also proposed a logical process purely in philosophy. He, the, he, I don't think I should be talking about philosophy at the moment, except that uh, it was mentioned by Jean yesterday morning. You started talking about philosophy, so why shouldn't I as well? Um, it was not widely used, this particular notation in philosophy, but uh, a, a guy called Josef Maria Bohensky, who, who worked in Switzerland after World War II, uh, and was a friend of my grandmother, and whom I knew, uh, did use this particular sort of philosophy. So that's just an introduction as to why I admire Jan Łukasiewicz, uh, a multi-talented man, but the reason we all admire him here uh, is that because he set up Polish notation and it went on to reverse Polish notation. So let's get on to the real subject of the talk. <coughs> Ten years ago, PPC UK, which is now HPCC, celebrated our 20th anniversary. And as part of our celebrations, we published a book with articles by HP calculator engineers and by users, um, very much in PPC's grand tradition of documenting everything. Could you move to the side of the slot? So yeah, we'll just get that back and next to the front. Yeah, yeah, right. Eric, you can slide the projector. Uh, keep now going, somebody else move the slides for me. Six inches to the left, so that would put the you know, we have, see we have a lot of space on the left of the screen there, so. Actually, maybe Eddie can just press space. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It'll, it'll be tighter oh, on the table. We'll just, yeah. just step forward in space. Good. Well, our cable's still good. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay. okay. Next slide, please. That's the book, uh, and I've got a couple of copies here. Um, and we had a very interesting article in it by Bill Wicks. Next slide, please. Um, We'll be celebrating, by the way, this is a pure by the way, we'll, we'll be celebrating our 30th anniversary in London over the weekend, 27, 28 October. This year? Yes, this year. No book. End of October. 
but we've got an issue of data file with details. I've got copies if anyone wants a copy of it. Mm -hmm. Our journal in its 32nd year of publication. Um, and we do invite anyone interested to come to London. Is it going to be a, a, a more of a formal conference? You guys don't, don't. It's not going to be as formal as one of these, but it's going to be more formal than our annual one, which is sort of totally informal. If somebody gets to give a talk, that's good. You still have a pathway to your spare bed? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> this year I can't put any guests up. Next year maybe, but not this year. Anyway, Bill Wicks's point was that RPN is a really pathetic notation for a calculator operating system. We do, not only do we have to explain how it works, you know, you don't use the equal key, but we then have to explain where the name comes from. Uh, and then to people who think that the Poles are idiots, as, as it's a popular <laughs> misconception in many places, maybe it's not a misconception, but anyway, uh, you have to explain why the name is good. Okay. Um, so just a brief, I mean, we all know about RPN. The, the, the normal method is uh, x divide y, so it's infix. Wukashevich suggested putting the operation before, uh, so that's why it's not called Wukashevich notation, and nobody can pronounce Wukashevich, so it was Polish notation. Um, Fridden and HP, when they were building calculators and, uh, and early computers, wanted the user to put both numbers in the calculator and then do the operation. If you type in x divide y equals, then somewhere you have to store the division because you can't do the divide until you know what x and y are. And uh, HP called it reverse Polish notation. Does anyone know where the name originated? I mean, no, no, Australians are credited for first using it in a computer. <coughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, Fridden were doing it mechanically <coughs> long before the name was invented. There were people using this method long before Wukashevich invented his method, but it's been called reverse Polish notation. Wasn't it called operator postfix or operator oh, prefix? Post yeah, yeah, post post computer, computer science would yeah. call it postfix. Okay, next. Okay, so reverse Polish notation is x, y, divide, which is silly because if Polish notation is divide x, y, then the reverse of it would be y, x, divide. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, something's so it's not really reverse Polish notation at all. X, Y, divide is really Polish postfix notation. So it should be called PPN, not RPN. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and anyway, we're using it as an operating system, not just as a notation on our calculators. And it's HP's notation. So it should be called HP Polish postscript notation <laughs> operating system, right? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> In other words, Hypnos sends you to sleep. <laughs> so the name is a sleep inducing name. Okay. Right. Next. Okay. Now, by the way, lots of us do use last X all the time. I understand Tim doesn't use it, but some of us RPN users do use it. So one of the comments in reply to your questions yesterday is, please, let's have a last X somewhere. You know, I, I, I was trying to convert Richard's blood sugar calculations to mine. So I was dividing by 17.3. So I was typing in a number, 17.3 divide. And then I type in another number, and I want last X divide, last X divide, last X divide. I'm using it as a constant. Um, in fact, RPN calculators don't have the facility of algebraic calculators where after a first multiplication you just type in the next number, multiply equals, where, where, where you've got the constant. So in fact, if we haven't got last x as an unshifted key, we are worse off for keyboard usage they than algebraic users. Okay, Palmer. That's why you will impress us if we see you writing or typing. Okay. <laughs> so, the proper name for our calculator operating system is Hypnos, <laughs> and it's worse than TI's AOS, and even it's worse than Casio's SVPAM, whatever they call it these days. Spam. So, Spam, right, yes. Bill pointed out that ordinary arithmetic naturally works the way as calculators, our calculators do. You, you put in the first number, you put in the second number, and then you do the divide or plus or whatever. So he suggested it should have been called the natural operating system. He's trying to dig himself out of a hole. That's what <laughs> <laughs> but 
do we want to say HP's traditional calculators work naturally? That would mean that RPL are unnatural. Um, <laughs> do we want that name? <laughs> um, it's natural advanced. Would it be better or easier to explain natural than RPN or even hypnos? Go ahead. <laughs> Maybe we organic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Quite honestly, I think a, a three-letter acronym, of course, itself a TLA, um, is a good name for a calculator or operating system. AOS is a great name for TI, and I think RPN is just fine. Go ahead. Um, of course, then we went on to something that's no longer a really pathetic notation. It's a really pathetic label for Bill's uh, version. <laughs> um, so RPL is also a, a, a TLA, and it has the advantage of not being as confusing as RPN because the, the letter L clearly says it's an operating system, not uh, a notation. So I don't think RPN is really pathetic. Compared to the alternatives, I think it's pretty good. It's easy to remind, remember. It provides a handle for explaining the notation, because then you can go through this business of Polish notation and reverse Polish notations, and I can give talks about Jan Lukasiewicz. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's not a pathetic notation. It gives a good name, and it gives us fun thinking up better names. OK? okay. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> other suggestions for names? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask Jackie. if uh, you thought that Lucas Shevitz's multi-valued computing could be used to describe Schrodinger's cat. Probably. I don't actually, I've never actually studied it. I've never learned it. Maybe maybe we should learn, have lessons on multi-value logic, but... The right answer is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you won't know until after you study it. Yes, yes, correct. Not even then, if it's quantized, you'll be in a mixed state. <laughs> Only until someone observes. Yes. Yeah. But can it be yourself? It's like Schrodinger's cat. Surely Schrodinger's cat is observing itself in the box. So it is observed. Ginter. Quality natural would perhaps uh, get you in trouble with the German manufacturer software. AG, they use natural okay. as a database manipulation language of Adabas. Oh, boy. oh that's, that's right. right. Yeah, Would yeah. that be, um, do you remember the competition for a name for the HP 41 version of RPN? Because it was a more programming language than earlier ones. Oh, uh, and Henry Horn set up this competition mm -hmm. and the name Focal won. Yeah. 41 calculator language. That's an urban legend. Really? As far as I'm concerned, Richard has that is an it. urban legend. Nobody can prove to me that, I, I know the contest is there, yes. but nobody can show me any documentation that there was a winner and what the winner was. It was <coughs> not published in uh, I don't care it was published. It was not published in keynotes. <laughs> it's quite right. Show okay. me something that, that, that... I have looked for it and I haven't found it. I shall look again. And you, are, you and many others are looking and they can't find it. Nobody can find anything. Okay, well, we put it in our minds. It came from somewhere. Yes. Cross the press is in the, the box with Schrodinger's yeah. cat. They <laughs> <laughs> had Schrodinger's cat ate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, Focal, if it is, even if it's a urgent legend, there is a programming language called Focal as well. Maybe that's why it became an urban legend, because nobody wanted to announce it officially, because I think it was CDC computers used Focal Death. as one of their oh, yeah. languages. The other core work on this is, is all that. I document all the documentation that yep. shows there's no documentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Where, <where's that> <laughs> okay, um, so we're certainly in a mixed or an uncertain state project. Yeah, that was it. Thank you very much.